Give me the second one here. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Look at verse number 19. Not only are we privy in biblical Christianity to a better sacrifice, but we are privy in biblical Christianity to a better hope. Look at Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 9. 19. The Bible says, For the law, comparing the Old Testament here, made nothing perfect. Look up here. Aren't you glad? I mean, listen, all the law did was this. You're a sinner. 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 Guess what? You're a sinner. Just to make you feel good, you're a sinner. For the law made nothing perfect. All it did was point out your foibles. And all did it point it out. But the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God. You know, Brother Bob said it this morning in Sunday school very succinctly, and I'll say it again this morning. I am so glad I live on this side of the cross. Amen. Listen, man, I love reading about that side of the cross, but boy, put me on this side of the cross any day of the week. Amen. Listen, I, I get a, I don't know, I wouldn't make a good Old Testament guy. I would be in hell faster than a bullet comes out of the barrel of a gun. Listen, man, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how I would do it. I don't know how I'd do it. I am glad I live in the age of grace. I mean, we say that uh, technically because of the theology term. I don't know if an age of grace is the proper term, but I know what? It's an abounding grace that didn't exist prior to the cross. That's right. It's a grace that is so abounding today. We have a better hope. Listen, the hope that is found in the person of Jesus Christ is better than the Old Testament law followed by Old Testament Jews. By the way, this hope is also better than a Seventh-day Adventist today who is trying to live by that same Old Testament law in the 21st century. Right. Amen, 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 amen. The hope that is found in Jesus Christ is better than any religious system you can name right now. You say, why? Because a follower of Jesus Christ has an enduring hope as to where he or she is going when they die. Amen. Now, that is something that you should shout about right now and act Pentecostal about. <laughs> listen, listen, man, you want it? I'll put the beat back on if you need it. Listen, <laughs> you need to understand, the hope that is found in Jesus Christ is better than any religious system, bar none. Why? Because a follower of Jesus Christ has the enduring hope where they are going when this life ceases to exist. Amen. Ask a good, mass-observing, lint-observing, candle-burning, idol-worshipping Roman Catholic where he or she is going when they die, and they couldn't give you a straight answer if you tried to get one. That's right. Now, listen, man, I know there might be a brother or sister in that Catholic church. I know there are a few. Yeah. And they didn't get saved because of the Mass. They got saved because some Baptist put a track in their hand. Amen, amen. amen. You know how that works. But you ask a good mass observing every Saturday, every Sunday. They go to confession. They do everything. They give. They're given towards the money to get their mother-in-law out of, well, maybe to keep her there in purgatory. I mean, uh, all this. There, she's observing Lent. They're burning candles. They're, they're bowing to idols. They're kissing rings. They're doing everything they can. And then ask them this question. If you died right now, where would you go? Well, I hope yep. for them... It depends upon venial sins and mortal sins and where they stand with the church at the moment of death. And even at death, they must have the last rites recited or things get botched up. Why? Because it's not better. Right. Ask me. Ask a Bible Christian where they are going when they die and they will tell you on the authority of the Word of God that they are on the way to heaven because Jesus Christ said so. Amen. Listen, man, this is not about, oh, Pastor Cook said we're going to heaven. Who cares what Pastor Cook said? I'm just affirming what Jesus Christ said. Yeah. Listen, he either, he's either telling the truth or he's not telling the truth. Right. He's either telling us that we have the inheritance. He's either telling us that we are, uh, if you will, join heirs with Christ. He said we're seated together in heavenly places. He said that we have the Holy Spirit who is in us now. He says we're not our own, we're bought with a price. If those things are true, and on top of all that in John chapter 14, he says that where I am, there ye may be also. I will come again. Amen. Either those things are true or he is the biggest liar and fraud on the face of the earth. Amen. Why? Because Jesus, because, because in Jesus, you have a better hope. Amen. In fact, Jesus Christ is the only hope. Amen. Not only in biblical Christianity do we have a better hope. Not only in biblical Christianity do we have a better sacrifice, but we have a better resurrection. Amen. Oh, this is good, man. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11.
I want you to look at verse 35. Man, this is stuff I'm giving you straight from the Bible, man. I'm not just giving you stuff off the top of my head here. This is stuff that's in your Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35. This is the great faith chapter. You need to read it if you haven't read it lately. By faith Abel, by faith Enoch, and all this kind of stuff. And by the way, they did all this without having the resurrection promised as we have it. That's right. You have to understand that. They did all what they did without, without having the same promises. And then look at verse number 35. Actually, let's go ahead and let's look at verse number 32. What shall we say more? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah, of David also and of Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen closely and listen succinctly. When a Christian dies, when a follower of the risen Lord and Savior ceases from this life, he or she is immediately in the presence of their Lord and Savior. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verses 21 through 23 make that abundantly clear. Uh, there's no limbo except for this kind. There's no limbo. There's no purgatory. There's no soul sleep. There's no endless reincarnation coming back as something different. Can you imagine coming back as Greg? Nor does my death cease my existence. Folks, there's none of that stuff. Why? Because biblical Christianity offers a better resurrection. You get some groups out there that will offer limbo. Yeah. They'll offer purgatory. They'll say, no, you just go to the grave and you sleep. Right. Soul sleep. Oh, no, you just come back as something less. Right. Just constantly, for all eternity, you just come back as something different. Listen, that's junk and bogus and trivial and fairy tales for adults, Amen. folks. What we have is better. Amen. And you shouldn't embrace it in a cavalier sense. You should embrace it proudly, but at the same time be brokenhearted for the people who don't. That's right. A Christian's resurrection, folks, is based upon the resurrection of the Savior. That is, I will raise bodily and my flesh will not see corruption in the dust of the earth. Every part of me will be changed. Amen. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the whole of the chapter is all about. Even in verse 52 where it kind of climactically concludes, it says, for in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And then a little bit later it says, we shall be changed. Read 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, I believe it is, or chapter 7 right around there, where it talks about how this, this tabernacle talking about our body dissolves, but then we get a new one in Jesus Christ. Folks, we're not, we're not like the Jehovah's Witnesses who say this. They'll come to your door and knock. They're nice people. they got nice little literature, you know, with nice looking people on there. And, and they'll tell you, listen, when you die, you'll get spiritually resurrected, just like Jesus was. Well, guess what? That isn't the same Jesus that, that I believe, That's right. because the Jesus I believe rose bodily. Amen. It wasn't a spiritual resurrection. And so they think that our resurrection is going to be spiritual too, in some spiritual kingdom. No, 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 no. Literal resurrection to a literal heaven, standing with literal people, with a literal river of life with a literal city of gold with literal cities of uh, literal uh, streets of gold and literal people and a literal eternity Amen. forever Amen. that's a little redundant but you know what I mean <laughs> for the Christian we have a better resurrection in fact if you're saved it's the only resurrection Amen. now you say preacher what was all that about just to let you know you're in the right company Amen. Amen. <laughs> you're in the right company